Hello, and welcome to BBC Sky at Night magazine's How to Build a Telescope. I'm Simon Lang of the Camden Amateur Telescope Making Society, and I'm here to try and help you build an 8 inch f5.5 Dobsonian, a copy of this telescope here. As you can see, it's made mainly out of wood, and because of that, I need to show you how to acquire some basic carpentry skills before you start making the telescope proper. I'm going to show you how to measure and mark up wood, to drill and saw it, and then I shall give you the task of making a workbench, which will turn out to be very useful when you come to build the telescope itself. The workbench doesn't have to be as detailed as the telescope, obviously. It needs to be able to function properly, but if you make a few cutting errors and so on, it's really not that critical. In the second issue, we shall concentrate on making the optical assembly, and that consists of a skeleton with an outer skin of plywood. I'll show you how to make the mirror cell for the primary mirror at the back of the telescope. I'll show you how to make the secondary mirror holder, which is at the front here, and it's supported by a spider. We shall detail how to make the spider and all the various adjustments that are required. And also we'll show you how to make this very rudimentary push-pull focusing device. In the final issue, we shall concentrate on making the cradle for the telescope, and we'll pay particular attention to the laminate and Teflon bearings that make this telescope run very smoothly indeed. It's a very user-friendly telescope and you should get many years of fun and enjoyment out of it. Finally, we shall show you how to collimate the telescope. That is, you have to align the rear primary mirror with the front secondary mirror so that the focus of the main mirror comes to a precise point at the focuser. But now let's concentrate on getting the carpentry done. But before you do any carpentry and pick up tools, I'd like to draw your attention to the PDF on safety. Read it as many times as you feel is necessary so that you're fully familiar with it. Think about any points and if you're not sure of them, read it again. I will then run through some of the safety protective gear that you should wear whilst you're working to save any nasty accidents. You measure and cut the frame tops, two at 700 millimetres long. You mark and cut the two bottoms at 460 millimetres long. You have four verticals and they're all of equal length at 600 millimetres. You have two diagonals, which are 580 millimetres long, the two shorter ones. And these, as you can see from the bench cutting guide, are the leftovers of the support tops, which I shall mention later, that these are the leftovers of those. And also, when you look at the cutting plan, you'll see there's one 1.8 metre length that's cut in half to make two 900 diagonals. First of all, you mark the centres of the frame tops, use your square to draw a line, and then you measure each way 246, and again measure with your square. You then drill four screws 20 millimetres in from each edge, with a six millimetre drill bit. Start off by drilling with the pilot drill first. It makes it easier to drill. You then go to the verticals. You mark up 17 millimetres from one end, which is half the thickness of the base here, and you draw a line. And then you drill two six millimetre holes, again, 20 millimetres in from each edge and you, again you use the 3mm pilot drill first, followed by the 6mm drill. You screw the two verticals onto the base using the 6 by 100 mm screws in the base here. Once you've got that into place, you've got the 460, you put the top plate onto the frame and make and screw one end in. Then measure across and make sure that it's 460 degrees 
sorry, 460 millimeters across to the other side. If it's not, this timber's not quite in the right place, put the frame down, pull the timber in until it is in the correct place, make a pencil line. Marry the two pencil, marry the pencil line up with the edge of the vertical and then screw it in. That way you ensure that your frame is completely square at 90 degrees. Once you've built the two support frames, you then have to cut the kick plates. Now in the cutting, bench cutting guide, I did actually say try and get 1.2 meter lengths of the 94 by 18. If you can't get 1.2, then obviously you'll have to measure, mark and cut them. But here are two 1.2 meter lengths and you need to measure 250 millimeters from the end edge into the center there, which corresponds to where the kick plates will eventually be screwed onto the sides of the verticals of the support frames. So you have one at one end, one mark at the other. Drill the two holes for the kick plate for the first vertical. And as you screw it on, just before you screw it on, glue the back so that you've got glue on there. Screw it in, and as you screw it in, wipe away any excess glue from around the joints. It's a good idea to do this on a few layers of newspaper, because then the glue may set into the newspaper, but it won't stick into whatever you've got it on when you're mounting it together. You fix the first kick plate onto the first vertical. You repeat the same for the second. Again, glue it. Make sure the two of them are absolutely square. You then give it about two hours to allow the glue to go off. You then repeat the same for the kick plates at the back of the unit. Again, making sure they're square. You may find that those two are square, but the ones at the back aren't. If that's the case, a good idea is to slacken the two top screws off, slacken the two bottom screws off of that side of the frame, and by supporting the side of the frame that you know is square, gently rock the other side of the frame until you can achieve a square with the kick plate at the bottom. When you've got the kick plate and that square, you know you've introduced the right amount of twist. At that point, screw the two screws up on the base, do the two screws up on the top. Check it for square again. Repeat the process for this vertical here as well. That way you know then that those two are square. You've got these two square, to this kick plate, at that point, glue and screw that kick plate on. Once you've done that, again, leave it for a couple of hours for the glue to dry. We then move on to the two ply support plates, which I haven't addressed yet. These basically are helping to spread the load of the ply on the rest of the frame. The ply, of course, has a tendency to flex by incorporating these into the two support frames, you're helping to reduce that flexure, making the overall top more rigid. So, once you've got all these other members squared up, you mark up the two holes, which are marked up at 240 millimeters in from the end, and then 265 millimeters in from the end. Because this is a 34 millimeter member on the top, measure down 17 centimeters, make your cross and put the screws in. I made the mistake of making these central. They shouldn't be central, they should be down 17 millimeters and in, so your screw should be slightly higher than this. You then put this piece on top of the support members here and project those lines down onto the edges, the tops of the supports, where the screws have got to go. Having centralized it by eye so that it's exactly where it should be. You then bring this down in front. You compare the little line you've made there, which mark compares to that mark, 
check to make sure it's equal on both sides. Support it, put one screw in so it's nice and tight. Move across to the other side, put the second screw in after making sure that it's flush with the top, followed by the other two. Again, it wouldn't do any harm to have a bit of glue on the timber as you screw it in. Don't forget though, always wipe your glue off. Have, have a washing up bowl and a wiping cloth handy and wipe the glue up off as you do it. Otherwise you get sort of dribbles of glue sort of oozing out and dripping all over the place. You want to make sure that it's all nicely wiped off and cleaned up before you leave it. Repeat the same for the other side. Here's the workbench with the diagonals fitted, but I fitted them onto the workbench without actually cutting them first. That's because you can use the workbench to cut the ends off and get a nice clean flush finish. As you can see the diagonal is projecting out from the side of the vertical. I shall now cut that off in order that we get a nice flush finish on it. This is a good exercise in getting your sawing straight because you don't want to damage the side of your worktop too much. So what you do is you make sure that you watch the blade is sliding along the side but don't put too much pressure inwards. You don't want the blade cutting too much into the vertical. So just use the vertical as a guide. And just as you get to the end, turn the saw blade upside down and just gently pull the blade back. And then finish it off <coughs> by a couple of long, slow, steady pulls with the saw blade. And there you have it. As you can see, it does look a little bit rough, but that's not a problem because that's where finishing wood comes in. You can use the file to finish it off, or when it's superficial like this, you can just use a piece of sandpaper. Pull the burrs off round the side of the timber, like that. Working on each side of the timber you've just cut. Do round it off, get rid of points like that. Don't forget that this is a workbench, so you don't want to go trying to pick it up or reach in to grab something and then have one of these sharp corners scratch your hand. And once you've rounded them off, just go up and down a few times. And you lift the corners of the verticals at the same time. Because with plain all round timber, these edges can actually be quite sharp. So it's a good idea to finish them off just the edge, just round the edges off with a bit of sandpaper like this. <laughs> 